Hi, my name is Keith Cooper for North Flight Images. This video is about things people get wrong about colour management, about ideas which sound good but aren't actually true about it. It is not a panacea. It is what I use as an integral part of making great looking prints. And I've got lots of them over the years, which I think are their, their quality, technical quality, testament to understanding and making use of colour management. Um, what is colour management to me? Why am I bothered about this? Well, I, I had somebody email me and say, I'm using profiles, but my prints look different. And I went a bit deeper into this and it seemed that yes, their prints were looking different on different papers, but they were using profiles. Surely the idea of colour profiles was that they made everything correct. Well, not really. For myself, colour management has one key objective. Now, I use this in my photography. I use it when I'm, I, I, I need an understanding of it when I'm taking photos, certainly when I'm processing photos. And if I'm making prints, it's integral to it. But it's part of the whole workflow. So it includes having my monitors calibrated and various things like that. It's about consistency. And for me, color management is about getting things right first time more often. Now, I make mistakes, I get things wrong. Um, it's one of the reasons I actually do the printer testing because it gives me an excuse to do lots more printing and testing of things. But I get things wrong, but color, man color management gives me a background that makes it much easier to see where I've gone wrong. So for a simple example, I'll use a known test image to have a look at a paper on a printer. That known test image is not one of my own images. It's a known test image. I do that. If it looks wrong, then it's wrong. Right, so that's yeah, why I use color management. What are the things that color management isn't? It is not some notion, and I would say spurious notion, of perfect or correct color. Now, if you're applying, I'm implying this as, as, as a photographer producing prints, producing photos that I send to clients. If I'm in commercial printing and things, there are aspects of uh, color management which get very technical and very precise. And they are about repeatability and all sorts of things and getting things right to known standards. But even there, there is not some notion of correct color, but does it fit the standards you want? Is it as good as you can get? So really you're looking at something which goes back to that first thing about right first time more often. I want prints, things that come out and don't look wrong. They don't have a color cast to them. Uh, they don't sort of come out too dark, too bright or anything. Now that's connected to a whole lot of things as well. I'll come back to some of that as well, but I've done lots of videos about why your prints look wrong and what the real reasons for that could be. And th there are quite a few various reasons for that. But another thing, what is color management not? It is, does not make your prints match your screen. In a way they never can, because the whole point is that print is light being reflected off um, a paper here, different surfaces, light from here or over here. And I'm seeing this, you're seeing this through the camera and via YouTube, which means that, you know, the precise colors you see will be a bit suspect. Even the precise colors I see depend on my eyesight, but you know, I have to rely on something at this point, but there is no idea of necessarily making them match the screen because screens emit light in a completely different way to which paper reflects light and the dyes, pigments, inks, how they absorb colors. So what is reflected? This is a subtractive process with screens. They're emitting light, red, green, and blue usually mixed up together to make the perception of colors. And remember, there's always that bit about, it's about your perception as well. Color management assumes that it's for people with perfect eyesight. Um, you do have to allow for the fact you might be, I've, I've tested and I'm not, but you might have a degree of color blindness, which can change your perception of colors. None of these things are, you know, you know showstoppers as it were. You can work your way around all sorts of things, but 
The idea of prints matching the screen is fundamentally wrong. And I would say in addition to that, that if you're in a print workflow where the end point is the print, the print is the important bit. If the print looks great and it doesn't look quite so good on the screen, who cares? It makes no difference. It's about the print. And that's a bit that I've, this is one of those bits where I would say people get it wrong, but they stop when it looks great on screen and then expect to just reproduce that in a print. Prints don't work like that. Now, if you know what you're doing, they can almost work like that, but you still have to know what you're doing. One other bit, and this is something that I'd never thought about until someone asked me about this one. Um, color management is designed to make all prints look the same. Well, if color management was designed to make prints look the same, why would you ever use more than one paper? Oh, all right, you might use a matte paper or a gloss paper because you prefer the surface sheen. Well, uh, these are profiling targets um, and they're, they're lit. This is a lamp I use for print viewing. It's an Ilford Ilfilux. Uh, you can change the color temperature and various things of it. Um, incidentally, I've measured the brightness. Print viewing is a big thing. I've measured the brightness using this um, under 15 quid light meter. There's an incident light meter measure gives you levels, uh, light levels in lux. This is about the right brightness for print viewing. It's about 380, I think, underneath here with this. Remember too, though, that you know, light spreads out. We've got other lights around here. So this is not an ideal print viewing environment, but I can easily see, and hopefully you can as well. Uh, this is a luster paper. This is one matte paper, and this is a different matte paper. And these are making profiles and I've been doing some work on Karen's uh, Epson ET8550 again and looking at some different aspects of printing on it. Now, they look different. Now, you might say, ah, yes, Keith, but uh, the idea of these printing targets that you do for making profiles, these are done with no color management. Yeah, they are. But they show here that the way the ink and the paper interacts and how it looks differs for papers. Making color profiles is about getting the best results for a particular paper ink printer combination. It is not about making things look the same. You will always get a different, the black instantly, I can really clearly see this, the black on this particular matte paper here is nowhere near as dark as the black on this semi-gloss or luster paper here. That is going to change how prints look. And uh, saying, oh, well, it looked fine on screen and then I printed it. Well, if you print it on a matte paper and it's a high contrast image, the blacks may not be black enough to show what you like. If it's a relatively low flat image, print it on a hard paper like this, and I use the, you know, the term from darkroom days of you know, photo papers, print it on a paper like this, all the contrast is up because there's much greater dynamic range on this paper than there is on this paper. So you've got two different, well, three different papers here. The, the difference is most noticeable between these two matte papers, which are slightly different, and this one here, which is the luster semi-gloss paper. In fact, it is, yes, it is Epson semi-gloss. So, because uh, I've been testing it on some other things. Um, so print I've got here, this print will look different on different papers. Uh, other prints I've got around here will look very different. Um, there's a black and white print here, big panoramic one. I did a video about the making of, of that. Um, that needs to be well lit. It's on a matte paper. Now, part, one of the reasons it's on a matte paper was because I just happened to have it set up in the big P5000 here for testing, for stuff like that. Would I print that on a higher contrast paper? No, because the tonality matches the paper. So if I want to make better prints, what do I need to do? First of all, use ICC profiles. Now, for this, the 8550, I've actually created over 50, nearly 60 odd different profiles for it because um, it wasn't very well supported when it first came out. But use a profile, print with a profile. Soft proofing, use it with care. I mention it several times in different videos. I'm not against soft proofing. I'm against the habitual use of soft proofing for every single image because really you need to understand what the difference is between a screen and a print. 
And the way to do that is to make a print, look at a print, look at a screen. When you look at the prints, look at them under proper lighting. When you look at the screen, look aside to it so you're not looking at the two together because various visual effects change how we see things then. But when you're looking at prints, hence why I mentioned using test prints, look at them carefully, appreciate them as prints. They are not just a copy of what's on the screen. Well, yeah, they, they could be. If you've just got a load of holiday snaps and you're going to run them off as small prints and you dish them out to people, yeah, they're copies of what's on the screen. There's nothing about it. But if you are in a print workflow to try and make prints that you want to show, put up, sell, anything like that, you need to understand why the print is not the screen and the screen is not the print. Um, yes, I know it's a point I labour quite often, but that to me is one of the key things that's helped improve the quality of my printing, is actually knowing that. Yes, having the profiles, being able to make them, that all contributes to it, but at the heart of it, there is an understanding that I'm aiming at a print, and when I'm working on a photo, I know I'm going to be making a print. That image on the screen is an intermediate stage. It's like working in the dark room. That's the negative. The actual print is the print that you show to people. Who sees the image on your screen? No. Yeah. Uh, turns out most of the stuff I do commercially uh, never gets printed. So I send it based on making the screen image look great. If somebody wants a print, I will often go back and re-edit it, especially for print the two can be quite different. Certainly if there are stronger colors, depends on the tonality, paper you're using, all the stuff like that. Say, so make sure you've got proper viewing lighting set up. This is pretty good. Uh, this is USB powered, uh, this one here. I can change the color temperature of it so I can make it cooler. This should show up on the video. Certainly if I take it up to D65, uh, then it should come out quite blue looking. And I can take it down to 3000. Yes, that's a bit warm. 4000, which should generally match the lighting here in this room that I use for shooting the video. So look at prints. I mentioned this, the 8550. This is still the printer I recommend for people who are wanting to get into printing and experimenting. Because it's an ink tank printer, the quality is very good. Now, it has a pigment black ink, which is quite unusual, the mix and how they use, but I've covered that in the reviews and all the articles, videos I've done about it. So somebody might say, yes, Keith, are you saying this one's better than this, the Canon Pro 310? Absolutely not, or the Pro 300 underneath it. No, these are pigment ink printers. They are very high quality printers. The 310 is excellent. Makes, in terms of print quality, I'd say, can I often see it? No, not very often. But yes, I'm going to say on some papers for some images, there's definitely I can make better looking prints on this. But they are only better looking prints when I put the two of them next to each other under a viewing lamp. And how many people are ever going to do that? Not many, I'm going to say. So this one, it is, the inks are cheap and that encourages experimentation. And as I say, it's that looking at prints, making prints, making mistakes, getting good results right. That's why something like this is so useful. Um, I had somebody write to me this morning and say that they bought one of these a year ago after seeing one of my videos, and it has transformed their photography in terms of printing. They print things now, they see things differently. So there you go. Uh, as with all of these, if you want any of the profiles that I've made for these, check the notes for it. I'll put a link to it in the notes to the various ones. There are loads available for this. There are not so many available for these, mainly because most paper manufacturers produce profiles anyway for these higher end printers. So there you go, uh, 13 inch printers. Um, each one is better in different ways. Um, so, but. This is Karen's printer and now, having had its little breakdown here, has to go back to her office. So if you've got any questions, please do let me know. Thanks for watching and bye. All oh, with the usual like and subscribe, which I never remember until right at the end. It is appreciated. Uh, bye.